In this unit, we are looking at how the total option value can be broken down into component parts, an intrinsic value and a time value. When people refer to the value of an option, they usually mean the market value or the total value, the amount that someone would pay to buy the option. If we consider a call option, we can define the intrinsic value as the value the option would have if we could exercise it now. So for a call option, we could pay K and receive an asset worth ST if it were in our interest to do so. So the intrinsic value is the maximum of S minus K and zero. For a put option, we've got the right to sell our asset for K and so the intrinsic value here would be the maximum of k minus s and 0. Because if k were less than s, we wouldn't exercise, and so the intrinsic value always has a minimum of 0. We can calculate the intrinsic value directly, but that's not the case with time value. Time value is just a balancing item. So for the call option, it's the full value of the option, ct minus iv, the intrinsic value, that we show above. And for a put option, it will just be the value of the put option, PT, minus its intrinsic value. So that's the mathematical way of looking at these things. What about graphically? This graph shows the value of a European call option. We've got the option price, or value, as a function of the underlying asset price. This option happens to be a one-year option with a strike price of 100. And we can break this value down into its two parts. So this dotted line shows the intrinsic value of the option. So for asset prices below 100, the value of the asset is less than the strike price of 100, and therefore there is no intrinsic value. But for asset prices above 100, the intrinsic value line goes up at 45 degrees. And that leaves the time value. That's just the gap between the solid blue line and the dotted black line. And that shows the extra value we've got from not having to decide now whether we buy the asset or not. We've got until the expiry date and then we choose. So for very low asset prices, our option is out of the money. And so there's very little chance of us wanting to exercise it in the future. And therefore time value is very, very low. And at the other end of the graph, on the right, for very high asset prices, we're very likely to exercise our option. So again, the value to us of waiting and not having to decide isn't that great, because we'll probably exercise. At asset prices around 100, we can see that the time value is at its greatest. And that's because around these values, we're unsure whether we're going to want to exercise or not. So the extra value that the option gives us because we can wait and decide later, is at its highest. Let's move on to the put option. So the graph here shows the value of a put option, and the intrinsic value is shown here. So in this case, for high asset prices, we've got no intrinsic value because the option is out of the money. But for low asset prices, the option is in the money, and the intrinsic value increases at 45 degrees as we go to the left. And as before, the time value is the difference between these two lines. Now this graph looks a bit different from the one for the call option. To the right of the graph, we've got positive time value as before. But interestingly, on the left, for asset prices below about 67, it looks like, we've got negative time value. This arises where the intrinsic value is higher than the total value of the option. So the balancing item, the time value, is negative. Why would this be? Well, for low asset prices, our option is in the money, so if we could exercise it now, we'd get a big payoff. As it's a European option, we have to wait. We can't exercise now, we've got to wait at the end. And during this waiting, there's not much further for the asset price to fall, so not much to gain, but the asset price could rise again, taking us out of the money, and therefore would lose our payoff. This issue of possible negative time values is looked at further in a later unit.